So in technology, there's different levels. There's different levels of expertise, right? A lot of people don't actually think about this. A lot of people, you go, well, what do IT do? Well, IT just fix my computer. I call them and I say, hey, I need this thing done and IT just does it. But they all do the same thing. Why do I need so many people in IT? And what we're gonna give you is a little bit of a snapshot on the different roles in IT, specifically covering the level one, two, and three when it comes to day-to-day -to -day support. The support model, for technology. Now there are other roles outside of this, right? There's the IT management, there's the people who do the development, right? All of the people who look after the coding and all of those sort of things. Then you've got even business analysts, you've got data analysts, you've got data engineers, you've got project managers that work in technology, and there's a few others. A lot of this does depend on the company itself. Some companies may not have the luxury of having somebody who sits in a level one, somebody who sits in a level two, somebody who sits in a level three. They don't have the money to be able to hire three people. So there's one IT person, and that IT person is expected to do everything. And then sometimes there's going to be one person doing maybe bits of level two and bits of level three. And then generally in a medium to a larger company, you're going to have a little bit more specialized roles where you've got specific level one people, specific level two people, specific level three people that are responsible for that thing and that thing alone. Even though they may help each other out and they're going to work very, very closely together, they won't jump from one to another unless they need to sort of provide extra support here or there. Let's start with level one. Now, level one is your first point of contact. If you think about it from a company who has a ticketing system, let's say they have a process where staff need some support from IT, they have a ticket that they have to log. Maybe they have to send an email or they have a portal where they log into or they contact IT on the phone or they send a little message on Teams or something to actually contact IT. I need my computer fix or I need my password reset or I need this software. The first point of contact is level one. So then what's gonna happen is there are people behind the scenes who are picking up these requests, who are picking up these tickets. They are the introductory level when it comes to IT. And what you're commonly gonna find is somebody who's maybe studying technology, they've just finished university, or they're looking at getting into the IT field, their first job, in a lot of cases, will be somebody in a level one capacity. So they are the first line of support. Now, the roles here are commonly going to be help desk or service desk type of roles. Now, the terms, the titles themselves, are going to change from company to company, but the terms are sort of interchangeable. Now, there are gonna be small differences from time to time, but in general, a level one is gonna be either a help desk or a service desk type of a role. It's important for them to have pretty basic knowledge in IT, at least from a basic level, understand a little bit around troubleshooting of systems, hardware and software. What is a computer? What are the different parts of the computer? What is the main applications and the software that this company uses so that can provide some basic support and understanding around Active Directory. Now, a lot of companies will give you these skills in the job. So sometimes it may be fine for you to come in with really limited knowledge and then you can learn a lot of this in the job. But Active Directory is gonna be one of those tools that a level one person is gonna be in quite regularly. Creating user accounts, disabling user accounts, resetting passwords, adding users to specific security groups granting permissions on a file server, things like that may be something that a level one person does. They're gonna provide some basic troubleshooting for the user. Let's say if a user is having some network connectivity problems, they may not be the expert on network terminologies and, and subnetting and routing and all of this backend stuff, but they should be able to at least provide some basic support to the user to try to help them. Are you on the internet? Is your network cable plugged in? Basic things like that would be pretty important. Maybe they need to install some software. They need to do an update to some software. They may be supporting that also, but they're gonna live and breathe within a ticketing system. And then you've got a central spot where you know exactly what's going on. You know who logged it, what time they logged it. Is it a high incident? Is it a critical? Is it a medium low incident? Priorities, things like that. So that you know how to actually respond and you can do all of that through a ticketing system. They really should not be performing tasks unless there is a ticket created. And then from there, the level one person essentially escalates things, moves it up to somebody who's now in a level two position. A level two position being somebody who's a little bit more senior, a little bit more experienced when it comes to the technologies that we talked about. 
hardware, software, Active Directory. They're now maybe gonna get involved a little bit in server stuff from time to time, but they're gonna be a lot more on the floor. What I mean by that is a level one person may be just at a desk, taking calls, responding to tickets. That's how they communicate with people. They won't necessarily go out to the floor. Let's say if a user has a hardware problem that needs somebody from IT to go and have a look at their computer, they're not generally gonna go out and have a look at that person's computer. They're gonna try to help and troubleshoot over the phone. A level two person though, well now they're a little bit more desktop support oriented, desktop laptop support, they're a little bit more techie, but they're now gonna be a little bit more hands-on with the user. They're gonna actually be doing troubleshooting that's a little bit more advanced. So level two people are gonna be involved in a lot more complex issues higher in-depth troubleshooting, analysis. They may get involved with day-to-day -day backups, with patching of infrastructure. They could get involved with now cloud solutions. Like for example, if you're running something like Microsoft 365, managing and supporting that. But they also need to have all the skills that a level one person has because a level two person should at least understand the basics of what a level one person does. But they are now the escalation point, that next level up from a level one. Building computers, ripping computers apart, opening them, upgrading them, doing advanced software troubleshooting knowing a lot more about Active Directory. They're not just resetting passwords now, but they're probably going into maybe some of the permissions side of things, creating the security groups, creating process accounts, getting into services such as maybe Exchange, you're on your email side, they're getting a little bit more advanced. So level two is gonna be involved a little bit more from a senior perspective. They're gonna understand a little bit more around networks. They should understand a little bit more about DNS, DHCP, servers and the other technologies that sort of revolve all of the level three, but at least from a basic, basic level. Now a level two person will also be in the ticketing system. They're gonna be somebody inside that system where a level one person, if it's assigned to them, a ticket is assigned to a level one person, they then assign that ticket to a level two person who then goes in and addresses that issue or tries to fix that issue. You then move to a level three and a level three person may also have involvement within the ticketing system, but they are now the escalation point from a level two. A level three is a lot more advanced, a lot more specialized. And a level three person should know the job of a level one and a level two like the back of their hand. So in the event that a level one, level two person is unavailable, a level three person should be able to step in and assist in that space also. They need to now know a lot more about servers, a lot more about networking, about storage, around security, around the cloud. Level threes need to be competent in these areas. Now it's not uncommon for a level two person to become a level three person. They've learned a lot on the job. They've gone from a level two up to a level three because they've gotten those skills. They may also have had a home lab. Every company is gonna need somebody that is gonna be doing a level three responsibility. Now this is even true of a small company, a small business who even has one or two IT people, well ultimately they're gonna have networks and maybe some sort of server or virtualization technology or the cloud or something somewhere. So somebody already should have the skills to be able to support that along with doing the level two and the level one responsibilities together. Their big thing will be infrastructure and network support, network administration, network engineering, looking after servers, virtualization. Now, what are the roles generally in a level three? Well, you're gonna have system engineers, systems administrators, you're gonna have network admins and network engineers, you're gonna have storage administrators and storage engineers, cybersecurity experts, you're also gonna have database administrators, you'll have cloud engineers, cloud administrators, and sometimes level three people may also include the architects and actually people who are now gonna be architecting and designing some of the elements of the network and the servers. But level three people need to also understand the big tech, right? They need to understand the server tech. They need to understand, for example, Windows Server. They need to know a lot more around Windows Server and Active Directory, perhaps having certifications. If they're gonna be dealing with networking, they're dealing with vendors such as Cisco, Fortinet, Juniper, well, maybe certifications, a CCNA, a Cisco certification. If they're security focused, do they have certificates around security? Physical servers, racking of servers, getting them all up and running, networks, right? If you've got a networking thing here, you've got routers, you've got switches, you've got firewalls, you've got load balances, you've got proxies, 
You then got databases. People need to look after MySQL databases, Microsoft databases, Oracle databases, and then all of the storage, a SAN, storage area network, a network attached storage, a NAS, comms cabinets, you've got racks, you've got data centers, network links, internet links coming into an office. Somebody has to manage all of this and that's where a level three person does it. Working very, very closely with vendors, with suppliers, and then ultimately all of this stuff needs to be monitored. Somebody needs to make sure that the health of all of this tech is well, making sure that everything is secure, making sure that there's endpoint protection, making sure that all of the data is being backed up, that it's been backed up to multiple locations, that it's been backed up off site. And also it's not uncommon to have different types of level three people, specific skills. A level one should know everything around level one. A level two should know everything around level two. But a level three, it's, it's not as common to have somebody who's a level three, who's across all server tech, across all networking tech, across all security, cloud, storage, etc. So sometimes in a company, you'll have different types of level three. Somebody who is just a network engineer and all they do is networking. All they do is routing, firewalls, all of that side of things. And then you've got somebody who's a server expert and all they do is physical servers, they're racking building servers, they're doing virtualization, they're using VMware, they're using Hyper-V, they're using Citrix. Then you've got a cloud person and they're all around AWS and Azure and, and all of the cloud tech. Hey, and also if you like this video and you like this channel, down below I've got links to some training courses if you wanna learn more about stuff. Why don't you also like this video and also subscribe to my channel Tech with Emilio. Would really appreciate it. I release videos every single week. Do that little bell thing so that you also stay up to date. But for now, stay tuned for the next video as we continue talking about all things tech.